Good morning, planner fans. Uh, as promised, I am going to show you guys how to make a Silhouette Studio document to cut out all of those wonderful uh, Target dollar spot page flags that were uploaded as a PDF. I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot of the image, separate each individual, the individual flag, and then how to tell your Silhouette to cut them out individually so that you don't have to do it by hand. I'm going to move pretty quickly through this video. Um, if you guys are brand, brand new to Silhouette Studio or a Silhouette cutting machine such as the cameo or the portrait um, go ahead and check out my other uh, YouTube videos first that kind of have a little bit more of a beginner instructions on how to um, basically just get your machine to work so I'm gonna uh, do this video with the assumption that you guys have already played around with your uh, software and you know how to make this thing work and um, I don't want you to get frustrated so check out my other videos first if you need to um, and if not without further ado let's move along um, there's, I'm sure, more than one way to do this. I played around with the tracing tool a little bit before I actually started this video. Um, and maybe somebody who has better tracing skills than I do could do it that uh, that way. I'm going to show you guys really just the quick and dirty way that I made these page flags and they actually turned out really, really well and you would never know the difference. So um, I'm not going to use the trace tool. We are going to use this uh, cutting tool right here. But first things first, you guys need to um, track down that PDF document and that is in a Facebook group called Minted Love. Okay, so I think I went to the page and I think I had to like it first in order to be able to see her postings. I'm not sure, I can't remember, but it's just Minted Love on Facebook. And then you're going to scroll down and uh, download this PDF here. So I would recommend doing that right away. Um, who knows how long PDFs are up um, before they get taken down. And uh, if I can, I'm going to try to upload that PDF to, I think, my Google Share Drive. And then I'll put that link in the comment, sorry, in the um, information section below. So that it, in case it does get taken down from here, you guys can also grab it from this video. So download this PDF document. Then we are going to open it up. <clears throat> oh, I think I already have it open. Yep, that's why. <laughs> so we're going to open it up. And as you can see, there's all sorts of beautiful flags in here. Now, you could literally just print this document as is, and then you'd have to cut all these things out by hand. But you and I are smart. We bought silhouettes. So that's why we're going to put it in our studio software and make the machine do all the work for us. So we have these kind of springy colors here. We have some florals. We have the gold and white, which is really cute. Black and white. I love black and white. Um, these are my personal favorite because I really love the mints and gold. Uh, I really like these ones too. And then you have the more floral, and then you have the really old ones down here as well. So I haven't seen a scanned PDF yet of the watercolor flag, so maybe if somebody snacks a pack of those, um, they can scan it and um, make it available for us to use. Um, I have also uploaded this PDF to the Erin Condren Fans Facebook page, um, so they allowed me to upload it to their group as well, so you're welcome to join there and snag it from there. So then what you're going to do... Um, let's go back down to, we'll do these ones right here. You're going to take a screenshot of just one set of the flags, okay? Now, if you don't know how to screenshot, uh, just Google it for your particular machine. On a Mac, it's going to be Command-Shift-4 because we only want to take a screenshot of this little tiny section. If we want to do a whole page screenshot of your entire uh, desktop, you would do Command-Shift-3. But we're just doing a small section. We're going to grab these set of flags and take a screenshot, okay? So when you take a screenshot on a Mac, I don't remember how it does it for a PC, but it just directly downloads it right to your uh, desktop. So uh, this is obviously not my first take of this video, so you can see I have a couple screenshots floating around on here. Then what you're gonna come into your Silhouette document, sorry, a Silhouette Studio software, and you're going to import to your library that picture you just took. Um, so you would go to your desktop and snag one of these uh, screenshots that you did. Um, at first, my first try, I did individual screenshots of the flags, but the way that I ended up doing it with all four is much easier. So just grab one of these, um, hit OK, and I've already uploaded it to my library, but hit up OK and it'll upload it to your library. Then you're going to go into your library and you're going to find... Right, there it is. You're going to find your uh, screenshot you just took. And as you can see here, um, you can basically screenshot anything and uh, try to make stickers out of it. So this is a Seahawks head. 
Here's an Etsy symbol I used um, to make stickers for myself. Here's a, a Starbucks cup. So um, some of my other videos kind of give you guys details about how to take a picture from the internet and make a sticker out of it. Um, you can see I was trying at, at one point trying to make these little um, weather picture icons as well. So you're going to double click this and it'll bring it into your document. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit. So now we want to get these guys separated from each other because they're just one object right now. So this is where our little cut tool comes in handy. So like I said, there's somebody might be able to use the trace tool and make this happen in a different way, but this is a really simple, easy way to make this happen. So um, we're just going to take our cut tool and right down in between these two guys, we're going to cut it, cut down in between these two. Make sure that you drag it um, far enough so that you're actually, see this the white around the edge here? You need to make sure that that's fully separated. So start up here and go all the way down there. And if you guys can see in between, you can see the grid start showing through right here. So there's no grid there. There's a grid here because your cut tool actually removed a segment of that white background. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you don't cut off any of your flags. Cut there. And lastly, we're going to cut here. All right, so now let's go back to our, oops, this one didn't cut all the way through. Like I just said, don't do what I just did and don't cut them all the way through. Mm, there we go, hopefully. Yeah, so now they're all separated. See, I make the mistake so you guys don't have to. <laughs> um, so now they're all separated. We're going to take our first flag. Let's move these guys out of the way. We're just going to focus on this one flag and then basically you're just going to repeat this process for every single one of the flags you want to cut out. Now you're going to create a flag shape using uh, this tool right here, the draw align tool. So this would be where I would say um, get into your grid and select snap to grid because the snap to grid is going to make sure that your um, page flags are exactly the measurements that you want them to be. I mean, I guess, yes, you could go in and mess with the, the resizing tool over here, the scale window, and change the width and the height, um, but the using the snap to grid is gonna ensure that you have nice crisp lines and sharp corners, so just turn it on. It makes it a lot easier for this segment, and then I go turn it back off because I hardly ever use it. So you're gonna have to decide if you want your flags to be going horizontal, so that would be, make it half an inch tall by, um, 1.5 inches wide or if you want them to be going vertically so that would make it half an inch wide by 1.9 inches tall. I made my flags um, to go horizontally so I made them one and a half inches wide. Um, you could you could do a combination of both. You could do half to go vertically, half to go horizontally or you could do a whole sheet of vertical and a whole sheet of horizontal. It's very very simple either way. So we're going to select this draw a line tool and each one of these little grid segments is a quarter of an inch so you're going to start in this corner and we're going to go half inch across one, let's see, one and a half inches down. We're going to make our banner part right there. So we went up, then down, and then we're going to take all the way back up to the top. Now, let's say that you screw up and accidentally went, you know, a quarter of an inch segment too, too long. That's where you could... Um, use this resizing tool here to fix the height and width of your object. So before we do anything with it, we're going to select it because these are all individual lines right now and we are going to tell the uh, software to group those selected shapes and basically this will glue this image together, okay? So now you have your very own cut shape of a flag. So this would be once you glued everything together, then you could come in here and change the width or the height dimensions of it if you accidentally went maybe one segment too far. Um, before we move on, let's check our cut settings. Perfect, it's on cut. Um, I can't tell you guys, I think I mentioned this in every single video, how many times I've made an entire sheet of stickers and it was accidentally set to no cut and I basically ruined it. So um, make sure it's set to cut. And we're gonna head back over. And literally all you're gonna do, actually let's take it off the grid first undo snap to grid. So now you can see this moves much more fluidly because the computer's not snapping it to every single grid line, which would allow us to manipulate this object right here even better. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can work really closely with our image. You're literally just going to take your page flag 
and you're going to layer it over the top of the flag that you just made. So I know that if you want to make um, the shape a little bit softer, you could probably take your line tools and um, maybe not having it snap to the grid kind of freehand it around here. To me, this really didn't bother me that the, the edges were a little bit different angle, but you can do it however you want. Just play with it a little bit. So um, I always make sure that I have a little bit of room um, when I'm cutting around an object. I like to have some bleed over because I don't like to have any white in the cut area, uh, sorry, around the edge of the cut area. And if you make this only the exact size like that, you're, the machine's not perfect and it'll probably leave you a little bit of white space around it. So we're basically just gonna line this baby up in here and stretch it until it fills our flag shape and goes a little bit past it, okay? To the top and along the bottom. And it really doesn't distort um, the flag the page flag itself. Um, you can see we cut, we lose a little bit of this circle right here, but the rest of the stuff is actually preserved really well. So um, just pull it and stretch it a little bit and it doesn't distort the actual image very badly when you go to print it. It actually turned out really well. Um, and you guys, I think you saw the pictures that I posted of the page flags that I made. So, um, all right, so we have our first page flag done here and you can see that the the software is going to cut along the inside of this pink here. If your machine maybe needs a little bit more calibration, feel free to make these borders um, a little bit more generous. You could even go as far as, you know, that wide so that you ensure that there's not going to be any white when your machine cuts it out. It's going to be completely edge to edge color. So then you're going to select both of these objects again and we're going to um, we're going to group those images together as well. So now this is one page flag done, okay? So you're literally just going to do that to every single one of these um, page flags and you're gonna have each one of them that started like this end up looking like that and they'll be able to cut them out. So then um, what I did is I just stacked them on top of each other like this once I turned them into cut page flags like that and then selected all the objects and replicated duplicate right and just replicate it across the page okay now one thing before I finish because that's pretty much it you duplicate all those across the page um, however many you want print them out and cut them one thing I want to mention before I leave you guys is what happens if one of the page flags is crooked because if you look at the PDF document some of the page flags are scanned a little tiny bit crooked you can see when I push this up next to the grid you can see that it uh, it kind of leans to the right a little bit not a problem at all. So what you're going to do, let's zoom back out here. I'm going to unselect this object here. I'm going to uh, take my flag that I just made here and copy it and paste it. Um, you could do that at the very beginning if you want to copy and paste it five times and then that way each flag has <clears throat> their own uh, cut shape. Put that back together. And select, there we go, now it's one piece again. So to kind of line this up, I just played with a little bit. I kinda, you can see a little bit where the actual white of the page flag ends versus the white of the background of the document. So I kinda just took it up to the corner and gave it a little bit of overhang. Um, it's gonna be white on white, so you're not gonna mess it up very much if you you know, don't take it all the way to the edge. And you can kinda see here, the, the page flag is perfectly vertical, or sorry, the cut, the cut page flag is perfectly vertical. So you can see where your um, PDF page flag is off. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select that PDF page flag and see this little green ball up here? This will allow you to rotate the page flag to get it straight again. So kind of just using your um, perfectly straight cut page flag as a guide, you can just kind of rotate it back. You can also see at the top here we have that little bit of the darker white versus the white of the background. You can use that to kind of line it up for you. So let's stretch it out some more before we keep rotating. And to the bottom, there we go. So yeah, so just kind of use this little green ball to rotate it however 
pleases your eye, I guess. These are your page flags. So if you want it to be a little crooked, fine, that's not a problem. I'm kind of a perfectionist. So we're going to have a little bit of bleed over of these gold dots. It's still not perfectly lined up the way I want it. Let's do a little bit more rotation this direction. Slide it over. And that looks pretty good to me. That's that's uh, pretty much up and down. So you can see it's more vertical than it was before. And we'll line up and cut even better. But this one's pretty easy because it's got a white background, so you can't really mess it up too bad. All right, so then select that, group it together and then go ahead and put it in line with the other ones and duplicate all the way across. So I think I covered all of it. Um, the important things to remember are uh, to make sure that your cut lines are set and um, to make sure that you have your registration marks put in. Um, I can't tell you how many tears I've cried over placing objects too close to these registration marks or printing them out with uh, printing a page out without having any, any registration marks. So that's the first thing I do is I go in and I make sure my registration marks are up and set correctly. And um, my experience, I don't put anything closer to that black mark than this gray line right here and this black line right here. So nothing, that's even, even that's cutting it kind of close, but you know, I also like to live dangerously. Um, but nothing gets closer than this gray line and that black line right there, and I have not had any problems since, okay? So I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Comment below. Let me know if you guys liked it. and Let me know if you guys want any other specific video done. And I hope you guys enjoy your uh, new Target dollar spot page flags, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.